Rich, man. Good morning, America. <laughs> indeed, <laughs> indeed. Oh, Fed, man. So it, These hit over, I guess, last Friday, and they're blowing me away. I love every car amp you get in here. <laughs> um, what made you get so involved in car? What do you like about this line so much? Well, to give you kind of a cool history, um, the first meeting or first encounter I had with Steve Carr was basically a phone call between an old rep we used to have. He connected me and Steve and we just hit it off on the phone immediately. Just a couple country guys, you know, kind of just wow. talking about stuff, you know, and we talked about his barn. We talked about the stuff he does on the weekends. <laughs> you know, we talked about fishing. We talked about everything. And, and I was like, man, this, even if his amps sucked, it'd be fun to just be in a relationship with him as, you know, getting amps from him. But obviously, even at that time, eight years ago, everybody knew that car amps were amazing, you know, and so it was a no brainer. And then, um, fast forward, I don't know, a year and um, we, you know, kept our relationship going and I wanted a Raleigh and they had this one, you know, where they had the barn wood on the front and everything and I remember that. And, I, and we ordered it and Steve called me, he's like, dude, he goes, I got a problem. He goes, is this your personal amp? And I said, yeah. He's like, dude, I can't get the barn wood. I don't have any more right now. He's like, you're either going to have to wait or or send me some barn wood or something. It's just this little bit, you know, mm -hmm. but it, it was still enough to, yeah. to, to, and then, so, but then like a few days later, he calls me back. <clears throat> I don't know what made him change his heart, but he's like, dude, he goes, I tell you what, I've just decided to tear my barn down in the back and I'm going to use the first piece of wood for your amp. <laughs> so I'm like, well, that's pretty cool, man. I get to, I get to use your, uh, your your barn, you know. So I got at home. I got Steve's barn at my house. Oh man, that which is, is great. Cool, you know, so um, he's a true boutique builder. I mean, this oh, isn't yeah. just a just a, an assembly line that calls himself. No, that. no. Like when it, it's it's funny, you know. It's it's just this cool. It's like whenever he finishes one or they finish one, whatever, he'll send me an email say, "Hey guys, we're excited. We're sending you this one." You know, it's always like it's not just like it goes into a computer. It's an order that goes into a computer, and then three months later, we get this notification from their computer system saying, hey, your guitar, your amp's ready. It's Steve emailing us saying, hey, guys, wow. we're sending this badass amp your way or whatever, you know. And it's just, it's cool because in this business, you can really get kind of jaded, I guess, complacent. I don't know what the word is, but, you know, it's like we see so many guitars come in, 12, 15 a day, and it's like that. That's ridiculous. This is ridiculous. These yeah. are amazing guitars, but they're just like, we just walk past them every day, you know, and it's like this, when he sends you those emails, when they're this sparse, when they're this sought after, it makes you feel, it's a, it's a rejuvenation. It gets me excited about products again. Oh, you know yeah. I mean? So. And I don't know a lot about them. I know the one we had here in the studio for several months that the was the only horse. amp that everybody wanted to play through. <laughs> it just had, yeah. it was special. Was that a uh, V? Yes. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, that was, those are special. And let's talk about the colors of them real quick. And then we'll get to each amp real quick. We'll play a little bit, but America. America, yeah, it's right here simple. for July 4th. A lot of other vendors, you know, there's a deadline coming. There's a lot of times they'll say, hey, we're not gonna get them to you on time you'll have to just pre-sell them. Well, Steve emailed like two weeks ago and he said, hey man, if you guys still want these by July 4th, I'll get them done. And he did, man. Oh. It's just, and they came in two weeks ahead of time or a week and a half. Doesn't you know? happen too often. It's just cool. <laughs> so anyway, America, red, white, and blue car amps. These amps are as American as they get. These are all great sounding enclosures too for the amp sig. I mean, it's all you know fairly low wattage compared to most of what you got here. Yeah, they're just really well matched with the amps. They are, and and the, you know when they go with the thinner wall birch to kind of keep that that feel from the old days. There's a reason for it. You know, I mean, none of this stuff. I mean, probably these designs are kind of quirky for aesthetic reasons, but everything else on the amp is. 
like the wood construction, the glue he uses, the you know everything he uses, the way he bolts it together, everything about it is about tone. I love the design of the grill opening in the front of that. I mean, it's yeah. like something out of the Jetsons. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, and he does little things <laughs> like that on every one of his yeah. amps. Uh, and it's always like perfect too. You know what I mean? It's never really <laughs> overdone like yeah. this. That's classy as it can be, man. And this amp, man, I'll play it here in a little bit, or we, you will, whatever. But it's, it's a golden amp, man. Yeah, this amp is just so cool. I was hearing you play over it, and it really, it, it's got one power tube. I think two AX7s, two AX7s. and one, so single-ended amp. I mean, it's just set up like the original Fender Champ was, yeah. which is a tone I love. But this has got a lot more punch and clarity it just doesn't yeah, mush out so right. quick but well yeah. and it's built for you know these newer pickups things like that you know that it's it's designed to handle that stuff which is the one you were playing through over here so the skylark is a relatively simple amp in some ways but you can get a, a ton of different tones one of the cool things about this and and it's 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 i'll, I'll just go through this real fast You've got volume, treble, mid, bass, reverb, presence, and your wattage selector. Um, so what I like about this amp is, let's say I'm, if I'm here at like, I don't know, 11 o'clock on the volume. If I kick in this high thing, it's kind of a, it's almost... What I like to do instead of putting it on low and turning this up, I can get a little more sustain out of it if I turn the gain down. Wow. So there's all these little subtleties that you can do with these amps that I think people, people look at these amps and they think simple black face and they think it's a one trick pony. But man, that's a compression pedal to me. Right yeah, there, you know sure. what I mean? That's a completely enhanced sound without messing up the tone. So, and here, listen to this. This is, the, the stupid little things is what I love, and everybody can, you know, you're gonna hear these, these amps played, but here, listen to this. That's the presence knob, it actually does something. So now, here, let's listen. This is what's cool. That doesn't sound bad, but by adding this knob and doing this, it gets rid of the bad stuff, you know wow. what I mean? So I know that's not a just mind-blowing, but to me, that makes it, this knob right here makes it playable on almost every guitar, any pickup you put on it. Well, to me, it, it blows my mind that you can take a, a blackface platform and get that tone out of it. <laughs> I know. And they really, one of the things I always liked about the vintage tone stacks is they, every knob influenced the gain structure. Exactly. And on a lot of modern amps, you don't see that. It's all, it's just filtering. Yes. That is, I mean, that's a lot of tone shaping you can do right there. One knob, man. Wow. And it's, it's, it, that's one thing I always do when I get an amp and I don't think a pe you know, I don't know, if you get maybe a purist that ha only worries about his own tone, you know, like uh, the tone he's looking for, that's cool. But like when I go in and I, like we're trying out amps, I go from zero to 60 on every knob mm -hmm. and just see what the range is, what the scope of it is, you know? For so, sure. You know, because you need to learn your amp, you need to understand. But here's, here's the, um, so here's 12 watts. <laughs> is awesome, isn't it? All of these have great reverbs. <laughs> yeah. Them. 
I think a lot of people might think that when they see these wattage selectors, especially where they have, you know, attenuator knobs on here, yeah, yeah, yeah. people are thinking, oh, it's just a master volume control. That's not. <laughs> it's, it's not at all. after the power amp. That yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. And that's something, you know, just to pique your interest, you can probably find a video on it, but we need to make a video about how some EQs are in the preamp section before it and some are after, you know, like Mesa's five band EQ is after the preamp, right. you know, so there's no, there's no gain sculpting with the EQ, but in the knobs there are. So yeah. that's a, that's a, con that's a concept we can talk about later. Uh, you want to go to the Raleigh? Yeah, for sure. Let's head over to Raleigh. Wow. And are, are I'll, you... I'll get close-ups of all these. This, just so you all know, this is volume, tone, master. That's and the master's what we off got right, right now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh... Man, if you can't record that. That is gorgeous. And since you brought that up, do you kind of see these as more for a studio situation or I guess for a person who's looking maybe for just a stable pedal platform? Because they're not really, you can't say they're switchable amps or right, any, you yeah, know, multi-channel. Yeah. So. Yeah, and you know, the, that can bring up a whole nother topic with effects loops too, because Steve doesn't normally put effects loops in, you know, or really ever. Um, but yeah, I, I would say, you know, since they're smaller, you, it, they're gearing toward the venues, you know, small clubs and pubs and things like that. But this guy, you know, I think even on their website, they tout it as like a studio slash apartment amp. You know, because you yeah. can get this thing stupid quiet. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I think it, people don't <coughs> just remember that you put a mic in front of it, you can play, you know, just Wembley Stadium, you know, wherever <laughs> you want to go. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, there's yeah. all kinds of myths out there that Billy Gibbons plays with a single 10 and every amp on the stage is just empty. Yeah. And it has no speakers <laughs> in it. I don't know if that's true, but I'm sure somebody's yeah. done that before. I've seen a few bands. Yeah, I mean, before, a little... Yeah tweed or something just mm -hmm. sitting back yeah so uh let me see if i can dig some tones out of this baby it's, it's like reaching out and grabbing <laughs> you by the throat man A Fender Champ, it'll do that. That's incredible. <laughs> Jeez, that is man. incredible. Well, over here on this side, we have the Super B112. And the fact that it's. Do they make a 110 and a 112? Is that correct? So. I believe they, they will, do. for sure. 10 watt output on this, 12AX7. Preamp tubes and 6B... 6BM8 for power tubes. Okay. All right, something. I'm but sure they're basically small power tubes to get the same sound out of a smaller amp. Okay. Gotcha. Kind of like an 84 and a 34 kind of thing. Uh -huh. you know? That makes sense. Uh, again, this has got a really great vintage tone, and it's got the three different voicings on Stinger. it. Stinger. I mean, I've got it. Yeah, it, uh, that's right. It is called Sting, isn't it? The Sting right Switch. And this is a 64 voicing. I'll just quickly go between a... A humbucker and a split... I mean, that's just... Really nice all the way around, nice and smooth. I'm gonna keep it on mid gain and just go through this because I like what this tone stack does. And then we move into 68. 
Dude, what did that just do? I mean, just <laughs> filled up that lower meds. Puts a little hair on it. Okay, yeah, we're getting into like early cream territory there. It's man, okay. And you're in the bridge pickup, right? Yes. Yep. And yep. then we go roll, to the baby. 72. <laughs> Holy cow! To me, there's not as big a dot <laughs> jump on this, but it's it's a it's cool. Go for it. Man, that's in plexi territory, then. Dude, that's it killer. sounds good, man. <laughs> Wow. Dude, right. that's insane. Play <laughs> play gonna... some uh yeah, just move around. Play a little bit. Super B. <laughs> and that is why Lord. we can't keep them in stock. Yeah. <clears throat> and it also has, I guess, like the Skylark did, it's got the attenuator switch on it. And so, and a full just rotary attenuator from zero up to whatever you want. <laughs> So, America. 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 We don't want to disrespect America, but this is red, white, and blue. It shows Steve's belief in our country, ours. You know, we, we think it's the right thing to do. We're having a little rough spell in our country right now. This should, we want to help bring, bring it back. Oh, yeah. Well, anything that we can do. And they're just gorgeous, Sam's. Yep. Absolutely gorgeous here for Independence Day. So... Let's rock Let's some rock and roll out. on the way out. All right, man. Sounds Call good. us at More Guitars if you have any questions about these or any amps we have in stock.